All right. Good morning, everybody. We're going to um, just have a cursory look today at the um, interaction with uh, InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and Revit on BIM 360 Design. BIM 360 Design is an Autodesk platform which sits on the cloud. Um, here you can see an example of a hub. Uh, this is our hub here, or my hub at Micrographics, and this is a test project that I'm working with. And it's all part of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. There's the Autodesk Construction Cloud, and Autodesk is pushing a lot of money into the cloud at the moment because of all the buildings that are going to be constructed in the next 10 years. And uh, it's looking at hosting the projects on the cloud and throughout the uh, life cycle of the building from, uh, from concepts through until deconstruction perhaps at the end of the building's life, support the operation, the building, the planning and the designing. So there's a lot of products in here. And then the design license is one of these products. Um, and that sits on BIM 360, uh, on BIM 360 and there you can see that we've got the design elaboration license. So in the modern age, uh, we've got Revit, we've got Civil 3D, and then we've also got InfraWorks, and all of these models can live on the cloud. So although I don't work with these every day, I did investigate how they uh, interact with each other. So I'd just like to give you some information on that today. The agenda for today is to discuss, first of all, the coordinate system that we use in South Africa. We're going to look at using InfraWorks for initial site context and then opening an InfraWorks model in Civil 3D. Obviously, one can work further with that then and exporting topography through BIM 360 from Civil 3D and linking BIM 360 topography into Revit. So that's the typical sort of workflow that we're going to look at. So we've got somebody else that's joined as well. Take a screenshot of this. I got that. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we'll field some questions. I hope I can answer any questions that you've got. All right. So first of all, which Gordon system do we use for South Africa? Well. This is a this is a uh, an situation where a lot of people are frustrated in South Africa. Um, we've got a lot of situations where architects get files from the civil guys, and uh, the drawing is either mirrored or upside down, whatever it is. So the the upshot of it is, is that we've got a very specific coordinate system that we use in South Africa, where we flip the x and the y axes, and um, so it's, in effect, a left-hand rectilinear coordinate system. While this is great for accuracy within South Africa, and a lot of our coordinate systems are designated as such, it does not play well within the uh, software, in the sense that while you can set up a model in Civil 3D using the South African Country Kit that has the UCS coordinate system um, aligned um, as needed, and where the point styles and so on list first Y and then X to indicate that we've swapped X and Y. Um, that model doesn't port very neatly into uh, or between InfraWorks and uh, Revit. So what some companies do is they uh, use a different coordinate system, a UTM coordinate system, or some other such um, document. So this is the actual document. I downloaded it off the internet, but you can also see that there's a, a directorate for national geospatial information. If you're from the civil side, you might recognize this. It's in Mowbray. There's an office over there, and they go into detail about the South African coordinate reference system. And it's quite involved, and you can see they've got different projections for the planet, the ellipsoid and the geodetic, and so on, what the datums are. I'm just going to scroll through this so that you can see what it's about. And then they perform a mathematical transform um, to map the coordinates into X and Y. And there's the reference to Arctobius Hook, of course, that's the main beacon. And then they go into the transverse Mercator projection um, and how that is done and so on and so forth. 
So there's some zones that you can see here. And typically, these are the South African zones. You can see they're quite small. So because these zones are small, the transformation is very accurate. Right? So if you use a South African coordinate system, you can expect a much better accuracy than, for instance, a, um, a, a, a universal transfers Mercator system. And they're going to a little bit of maths um, on what the transforms are and then what sort of area you can expect. And that really is what we are dealing with in South Africa. But like I, like I mentioned, because they, they swap X and Y, or that's how they've defined the coordinate system, it doesn't play really well within uh, Civil 3D or between the different software. While you can manage that within uh, Civil 3D, you can't exactly uh, manage that within the um, Civil, uh, between the different platforms. Uh, that's just something to take note of. So if you start a project, then um, depending on what your management says or, or what your project leader says, then you would want to um, define the coordinate system that you use. So for this example, what I've done is use the uh, universal transverse uh, Mercator system. You can see here that we've got zone 33, 34, 35, 36. Recently, um, I helped somebody with, that's got the same projection in um, Vietnam, and then also in that got the same problem as us, where the uh, X and Y is swapped, and I think uh, Yemen as well, somewhere over there. And then uh, recently, also I had a look at the Western Australian. So what makes this nice is, uh, although it's not all that accurate, mostly accurate or sufficiently accurate for, say, roads and infrastructure, um, but uh, it is just something to take note of that it's not going to be as super accurate as the South African coordinate system. But the UTM system is the one that I've used for this example. So first of all, what is InfraWorks and why do we use it for site context? Well, InfraWorks uh, is a platform that you can define a project from anywhere within the um, the world really. It references Bing Maps. This is an area in Woodstock that you can see over there. It's just an area that I've decided to play with here in District 6. Um, and it has topography and it infers some of the in infrastructure. And then on top of this also you can reference in geo databases, um, uh, GIS data. Um, so there's databases that the the municipality will have for the infrastructure, for the piping, for more accurate topography. There is a lot of information that you could, um, in theory, import into this. I've just used it as it is. So there's some topography. It will give me some sort of way of dealing with the site that I've got over there. You can see the contours. So if I know nothing about the site, at least I can use InfraWorks just as a start and maybe start my design from here. Um, and although this is on the cloud, it also saves a file down onto your computer, right? So what's important in here is to set the coordinate system. And what you'll see over here is that I've set the coordinate system to the UTM system, Universal Transfers Mercator, the 84, 1984 reference, 33 South. And you will recognize that from the grids that were drawn on the, on the earth there. Uh, let's just go back to the previous slide. Um, over there you can see we're working in 33 south. So that's kind of over here by, by Cape Town over there. That's, this, that's the zone that we've used. And it maps this rectangular bit over there of the planet onto our map, onto um, in, InfraWorks. So that's the important thing to note is that we're using UTM 8435 south. There's a lot that you can do in InfraWorks. You can design infrastructure in here, bridges, railways, roads. Some of the roads even have assemblies and sub-assemblies that you can port through into um, Civil 3D and then use directly in Civil 3D. And what it does is it stores this file on the computer. And there you can see the path to this. It is uh, in my documents, Autodesk InfraWorks models, Autodesk 360, and then it's got some other identifier for the project, you'll have to open that to see the uh, SQLite database file that you can then open directly from within Civil 3D. So just to recap, the basic idea is you use InfraWorks, 
get the initial context of the site and to link in GIS databases and whatever information you'd like and maybe do some initial design of the infrastructure and then you'd like to go into more detailed design within some 3D and that is now where we go next. So within Civil 3D, um, you can save a file in the cloud as well, uh, just like with uh, Revit and InfraWorks, you can also now save directly from 2021, you can save directly in, into the cloud to share that model with other people. Of course, with an AutoCAD file, you wouldn't be able to work as two people in the file at the same time, but what we do in Civil 3D is we use data shortcuts, you might be familiar with this term, and then we can split the team up into individuals that work on specific areas of the design. Somebody might be doing the alignment, somebody else the profiles, and um, the, yeah. so there's different the topographies and uh, landscaping or uh, terraforming, or whatever it is that, that you need to do in there. But we can host that in the cloud as well. So when we open up, let me just show you Civil 3D quickly. This is now the Civil 3D. And what you'll see in here is that this topography is uh, directly from uh, the InfraWorks model. All I've done over here was to create a surface. Um, and in the definition of the surface, I've used some edits just to subtract or, or add FG. And you can see FG. So I think let's not make this complicated. Let me just say what I've done. I've isolated. I've got two sites where I've got buildings. And I've used the large topography that came in from the uh, InfraWorks file. And then I've isolated the areas where I'm going to build the building. So even though there's a big surface in here, I've just composed a new surface with a boundary around the building because this ultimately is what the architect is going to be interested in. So what I'd like to do and what I've started doing in Civil 3D is to do some grading for the base of the building. And of course, you can do parking lots and roads and curbs. There's uh, so much that you can do in Civil 3D with regards to topography. Um, and it's much more useful uh, in that sense if you have somebody with the capabilities and skills to do the site work around your building in Civil 3D than what it is in um, Revit. And so it's a much more uh, powerful way in which you can get the topography done. Um, most companies will use Revit. Uh, some companies do use Civil 3D, but uh, you know if you try and do a parking lot, I've worked with the add-ins for Revit where you can um, uh, play with the topography and it's not nearly as powerful as what uh, Civil 3D is. So if you do a parking lot for a shopping center, for instance, you'll find that it is so much more powerful to use Civil 3D. It's much more accurate and so on. So that's really the thinking behind it is that in the, um, in the BIM workflow within the uh, AEC collection, we've got these programs. Why not use them? Uh, grab the context from InfraWorks, do a little bit of initial design, take it into Civil 3D, do the grading and whatever we need to do, prepare the base for the building, do the parking lots, do the roads, do the access, do the drainage, um, the watershed analysis, all of that we can do within Civil 3D. But now we need the context of this site within Revit as well. So that's the next step. All right, so what is important, uh, it can bring in the, when you do your uh, drawing, uh, on the settings, if you right click on the, on the drawing name, you can see that you can set the uh, coordinate system. And in this case, the coordinate system is the same as the one that we are using within the um, InfraWorks file, it's the UTM WSG uh, 1984 datum, zone 33 south, it's in meters and the centenary is 15 degrees. So it recognizes the name or you, you need to have both of the coordinate systems exactly the same, of course, for it to be um, uh, 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 geolocated. And when it, once it is geolocated, then within uh, or Civil 3D, you can see the, the, the background image there. That did not come from uh, InfraWorks. Uh, that came from the geolocation, the automatic geolocation within Civil 3D using the uh, Bing aerial, uh, just put on a hybrid map for you, then you can see what that looks like. 
So there you can see what the imagery is, what it brings in from that UTM system. And it's this large sway of imagery that is mapped onto XY from a satellite image. So there you can see the zone that is coming in. That zone that, that we were talking about is now mapped out into X and Y. And that is what we are seeing over here. All right, so when we zoom in, 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 it's geolocated. And it recognizes exactly where we are situated. And it's bringing in the topography because InfraWorks and Civil 3D share the same coordinate system now. We can see that it's perfectly located within Cape Town. So that's super useful. Um, the process of setting up the coordinate system within Revit uh, is a little bit more involved. Um, if you ever need help with that, you're welcome to contact us as well. But essentially, we use uh, the assignation of the coordinate system based on an XY grid. And you can see the XY grid. And uh, what I've done is I've just measured some points on this grid to give me an X and a Y location. And uh, also some um, elevations that I've got over there. What you'll see on the right hand side in this view is the importation of a uh, 3D DWG export of, in this case, the structural file within Revit. And that is now also located exactly on the site where it should be. Right. So even though you're in AutoCAD, if you export that as a 3D DWG, your, your, your model, you can see how it fits into the context even within Civil 3D. So if you're the civils guy and you want to see what the architects are doing and how you must adjust to that, you can always bring a part of their model, maybe, or the entire model, you can bring that into your um, Civil 3D file as well and have a look at that. So that's how you work backwards from, from uh, Revit into uh, Civil 3D to get that sort of context. There's limited uh, interoperability between InfraWorks and Civil 3D, but of course if you make edits in InfraWorks, you can always bring that into Civil 3D. The reverse is not that powerful. So the bi-directional associativity between the two platforms is not that that um, powerful that, that you can write your Civil 3D uh, directly back into uh, InfraWorks with all that much uh, 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 bit, uh, ability than what you can go in the other direction. Right, so you have to have the same coordinate system. And very importantly as well, I've made this mistake more than once. Um, the first time I came across this, I was in Mor uh, Mauritius looking at a highway over there. And it just would not open the file for me. And the reason was it was still open in InfraWorks. So if you want to open a, a, a SQL database or an or InfraWorks file, a SQL-like database in um, a, a Civil 3D, then you must close down InfraWorks. You can't have the two programs open at the same time. So um, it's maybe something also just for your information. Right, so for argument's sake now, you've done a lot of work designing this platform, designing the roads, the, um, the drainage, the parking lots, and whatever you've done, and you now want to share this with the uh, architect. And because we are you know, maybe working from home, we'd like to have that on the cloud. And now we'll find that we can relatively easily, just if we have the design license, use the Collaborate tab. And over there, you can see we've got this Publish Surface command. And what that does is it opens all the surfaces that you have available. You can then choose which surface you'd like to export or to publish. And then you can also specify the output file. So if you click on that radio button over there, it takes you to a dialog over there. And you can then browse to your BIM360 folder where you can save that as, and you'll see it, it saves as a dot shared dot DWG. So that is how Revit will recognize that and then bring that into Revit itself. Um, and you can update that from, from time to time, reload it into Revit as the design goes on. So civil skies can do their design, and then every now and then the, the architects will, will update their, their model. See my Revit has closed down. We'll try and see if I can open that for you shortly computer is struggling for resources at the moment uh, because I've got all of these programs open at the same time. It's quite simple. You might have seen this in Revit already. It says link topography. And that just then browses to the BIM, BIM 360 platform. And if you've set your uh, shared coordinate system up directly between the models and in between uh, Revit and 
Pixel 3D, then you'll see that it just links directly into position. So that should be automatic. There are some other tools as well. Um, you've got the shared points uh, uh, tool within between Revit and uh, Civil 3D, but uh, I found that to be, although it was super accurate and dead on, you must either use one or or the other. But um, again, if you're struggling to get the coordinate system in Revit right with respect to uh, Civil 3D, then give us a call and we can assist you with that, obviously. But the left-hand coordinate system, of course, uh, that South Africa has, or the swapping of the X and the Y so the Z is into the ground, um, that makes Civil 3D incompatible with Revit. Because in Revit, then, what we do is we, we don't have the X and the Y that um, correspond to the same X and Y within uh, Civil 3D. And that's why we use the UTM system. Okay. So let me just show you what that looks like in Revit. Um, I'm going to close down InfraWorks. I think we've seen what we needed to see in InfraWorks. And then also uh, Civil 3D. And you can see this the Civil 3D file. Okay. And then... And then I'm going to just open Revit again. Yeah, so it's a it's a great resource. Um, the fact that uh, I know that topography is usually a challenge for most people in Revit, so I prefer this uh, Civil 3D. It's a great opportunity also to get just to get a consultant working with you to do the site and parking lots and roads and whatever it is that you've got coming into uh, Revit, export it, publish it into the cloud, link it down onto Revit, and then you've immediately got your uh, context of the uh, of the site work. It's a beautiful workflow. It works really well. You can have a team of civil engineers working on the design or the infrastructure around the building and immediately you can see that context within Revit so you can do your architectural design just with topography. And it acts like topography in Revit as well. Although you can't edit it, it still looks exactly like a normal topography would. So I do apologize. I had Revit open just now but it's I think the computer is just running out of resources um, and it would have closed Revit down. All right, so here's Revit for instance and uh, from our BIM360. I think the file that I was working on is this one over here. There we can see it. I'll just give it a little bit of time to open up. So this is now loading directly off the cloud. Uh, onto this uh, uh, shared workspace if, and within Revit it's much more powerful than it is within the AutoCAD verticals or in InfraWorks you can work more than one person within a file as well um, but in Revit it really comes alive because now we can work as a team on the same model so if you've got a team of architects or engineers sitting at home and they're all working together on the file they can all work in the same file at the same time it's the same as if you're sitting in an office with a local area network all work in that model at the same time. So you can have your, in, instead of sitting in an office, you're just working off the cloud and everybody can work from home. Uh, your teams, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, it's a really powerful workflow that uh, is available. But now with the Civil 3D um, export of the topography, now we can also involve the civil engineers to do their bit and to give us our topography. So we don't have to worry about the topography, we just link their topography in and we go and carry on with our designing of the building. So you'll see various things on the screen right now. Um, part of that are some CAD imports. That, that's just a sheet that was generated for the two different locations over there. You can see them. Right. And then these are the topographies that were linked in. If you click on one of these, you see it says it's a topography link. Um, and you can put it in by shared site as well. So it's very much like a normal link that you bring in. And there's not much that you can do with it. You can just put it in a work set. And that is linked directly through the insert menu when you link the topography. You'll see that you can go into BIM 360 and you can then link a topography in. 
And it all depends again on the coordinate system and that's why we um, had a look at that to start with. And the uh, I typically just save it, save it into a uh, shared folder. You'll see it appear just now. Just to show you that it's sitting on the cloud is our uh, shared should be shared BIM. And within the site works. And there we can see the biography. So that's where you can it's not somewhere. If we look in there, I think we'll find that file. It is on the. I'm not sure where it is. Um, is our shared bin folder? Yeah, yeah. So I would probably just have to publish again uh, to make it available. We apologize about that. But anyway, that's how we bring it in. And this now is another linked model. So I'm just going to show you how, how that works as well. Is uh, just because we've got the shared coordinates and the topography is on site. This design over there is the uh, uh, architectural link that I've built in. See, it looks a bit different from the um, Civil that was exported and opened within AutoCAD. Here's our design collaboration folder. If I bring in the tier one architectural model, then I can say by shared coordinates and open. Um, okay, and that's thing this one. That's already been built in. On Z one. Right, so cloud models they work a little bit different to a local area network um, and you would have to set up uh, the coordinate systems. So everything's coordinated, it's in place and that is uh, in essence how we manage the, uh, the models on the cloud. And again, it, if you guys need uh, help with this, then please uh, contact us here at Micrographics. The, you see our contact details on the screen over there. Um, but I would I would recommend you you look into that. I'm, I know of some vertically integrated companies that have already done this, and uh, they've got great success with that. I don't know if any of you have any questions. Um, we finished it a little bit early, but uh, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. Otherwise, again, if you guys want to know a little bit more, um, or if you need assistance with this within your company, then give us a call here at Micrographics, and uh, yeah, all right. have a great day further. Cheers all. Dottie, have a nice day.